Stephen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I had to get mine out. I had to get mine out. I had to get mine out. You got yours out, so I had to get mine out. You know, uh, we'll never see this day again. This day was made for us that we would give God praise, give Him thanks because He is good and faithful. God is a faithful God. When we when we are not even faithful, He's still faithful. When we fall short of being faithful, He is still faithful. Amen. I guess I'm gonna have this problem tonight, but uh, but He's faithful. <laughs> but He's faithful. He's a faithful God. Even when we are not faithful, He's faithful. Do, do, do you do you feel that? Do you do you experience that? And give Him thanks for it that. When you, we're not faithful, he don't quit. He don't change his mind. He don't, he don't throw in the towel and say, you know what, I'm done with you. Amen. This is the third time. This is the fourth time. This is the fifth time. This is the sixth time. Did not tell you all, but God is faithful. He's faithful to his word. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God he's faithful. And we ought to put our trust in his faithfulness. If you put your trust in God's faithfulness, you'll never go wrong. You'll never go bankrupt. You'll always find peace in a time of trouble. When you put your trust in God's faithfulness. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we, we're here tonight again. Uh, for those that know that we have a class in the back, an academy, uh, making disciples. We're talking about growing in grace. And so this is the time I get to shout out to you. Uh, uh, for those in the class, let me, get you, let me get your hands. Oh, amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. We're growing together in the grace of God. And so uh, since tonight we're here, we thought we'd bring a Bible study to you. Amen? amen. And so it's like this here. You know, uh, uh, we're growing together. I, I see, When I read the Bible, uh, this as Paul sent letters to the uh, to different churches and those that were working with him those that were of the faith that he would give them information concerning the revelation that God had given him concerning Christ and he they passed those letters on and on to strengthen them in the faith and so I'm just here tonight to strengthen you in your faith amen, amen. and so that we grow together knowing what God has done for us uh, through Jesus Christ. So we were talking about, last time I was with uh, you probably also, but we had just finished up a class on faith. And uh, when I say finish, you never finish talking about faith. If you're in Christ Jesus, you always talk about faith, the faith, because that's what we are with the faith, or the righteousness of faith. But we were, we were ended up talking about faith in, in, in that setting, and we moved on to uh, talking about uh uh, freedom from the law standing in grace. But as, as we were dealing with faith, knowing that we're not talking about a faith of a denomination, but the faith that uh, uh, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the message of Jesus Christ. So faith comes to us by the message of Jesus Christ. That faith that comes to us is the faith that allows us to know God, to allow us to trust God, to believe in God. So it's through what Christ has done allows us to have confidence in God. To allow us to have assurance. To allow us to have a foundation that's unshakable uh, in God for what he has done through Christ. So when we get the message of Jesus Christ for what he has done from the cross to the resurrection, we get the assurance of faith to believe that God loves me. And he's accepted me through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, and we find out through the scriptures that uh, even some said, you know, to, to, to Christ, help me with my unbelief. Help me to believe, uh, you know, this to be so. You know, we all are at different levels of understanding God's grace. We are at different levels of growing. But the Holy Spirit knows exactly where we all are. And he, he's not going to give you a stake if you're still on me. On milk, I mean. He's not going to give you steak if you're still on milk. And he's not going to give, but he might give you milk if you're on steak. Because those who eat steak got to know how to condescend to deal with someone that's on milk. You know, it's not, sometimes it's not always about your big revelation. 
If I can take a sidebar. It's not about how much you know. You want to tell everybody you know everything you know. It's not about that. Be led by the Spirit. You, you have someone that's going to come share a revelation with you, but they can't even listen to you because they got a revelation. You know, you want to tell them, you know, God told me this. Well, God told me this. You know, just drown you out. You know, like, oh, okay, I guess what he told me ain't too much of nothing then, I guess, you know. You walk, you walking on water. When somebody get that fly, I kill it from me, okay? Yeah. You know, enemy have his way to attack me, you know. But uh, so, but what I want to share about faith before I move on. Faith, dealing with faith allows us to see that uh, the finished work of the cross. And for those who have heard me speak before, you know I talk on this a lot. It's the finished work of the cross. Our faith is in what Jesus has completed. It's what he has finished that, that allows us to have a faith towards God. And the Bible says the just should live by faith. Uh, the righteous should live by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know, so those scriptures, matter of fact, let me read a few of them real quick here. It says, um, so then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live, continue to live in him, continue to live by faith in him. But my righteous one will live by faith. And he says that uh, the just should live by faith. For this, for this by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. But what I want you to see is, and I think I've done this before, but I'm going to do it again. You know, repetition <laughs> is good, amen? amen? If I was going to, if I, to sit in this chair, how would I sit in this chair by faith? To sit on it. To trust. Why? I mean, to sit in that chair by faith, confidence. I'm going to sit in that chair by faith and confidence. Why? It's going to hold you. Because it's going to hold me? Why? Anybody else? Because it was constructed well. Because it was constructed well? Anyone else? Why am I going to sit in this chair by faith? You don't speak of it, don't need to you just you just have faith and you get a hold of the You've done it countless times already. <laughs> <laughs> not that one. <laughs> because you don't do it. So I'm not going to sit in. I want you to hear something here. I'm going to sit in this chair by faith because it's finished. It's complete. So I'm sitting in it by faith faith because it's finished. I'm resting in this chair because it's finished. So I'm sitting in it by faith. So Christ is saying to us, he said, it is finished. So come to me because it is finished. You're going to rest in me on what I finished. You're going to trust me on what I finished. You're going to have confidence in me on what I finished. You're going to walk with me on what I finished. You're going to have a source of faith in me because of what I finished. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because when I present you to the Father, I'm presenting you to the Father on what I finished. And what, and what I have finished have brought you to life. If you don't trust me for what I finished, you're not walking with me by faith. If you're not walking with me concerning what I have finished, you're not walking with me by faith. You're trying to do something in your own works and in your own behavior. And we're doing it by uh, uh, the performance game. You're gonna, the just should live by faith. The just is living by what is finished. The righteous is living by what is finished. <coughs> We've been saved by grace through faith, through what has been finished, we have access to this grace. Are you hear what I'm saying? So, Jesus said it is finished. What is finished? What did he finish when he died? What did he do? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
He came as a lamb of God in the flesh to deal with our sin once and for all. And he gave up the ghost, the spirit. And before he gave it up, he said, it is finished. So what the law couldn't do, he did. The law was not given to stop you from sinning. From sinning. The law was not given to you to help you to stop sinning. The law was given to point out our sin. That's why the law was given. It, 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 it allows us to see how sinful we are and how our behavior is and that we're separated from God and we're also spiritually dead. Now, now to the Jew, when you're talking to the Jews, he says, apart from the law, there's a righteousness that is of God. Because they, to, the, to the man that is under the law, to the man that understands the law, he's, Paul is saying, look, there is no one that is, will be justified according to the law. But apart from the law, there's a righteousness of God that's been revealed. For the Gentile, which the law wasn't given to him, in the scriptures, it kind of identifies it like this. Because if we've been saved apart from the law, we've also been saved apart from the flesh. Because the law was given because of flesh. A law was given because of bad behavior. Our flesh is out of control. So we need some rules and regulations to help us live. It's to govern the flesh So because sin is in it. And the law is to help put it in order. But to the Gentiles, he's saying, it will be saying, Apart from your flesh, there's a righteousness of God. So, apart from the law, apart from the flesh, he saved me apart from the law, he saved me apart from my flesh, but he also saved me apart from sin. Sin is in my flesh, and the law condemns me in the flesh. And the Bible talks about we're slaves to sin. Because that's where we were born. But Christ is our freedom to save us from this condemnation or from the wrath of God that is upon this sin. Are you, are you following me now? Okay, so Jesus is saying, so I've dealt with your sin at the cross so I can save you apart from your flesh. Let me get two volunteers real quick so I can do something right quick. Come on. So why don't you make sure you don't slip? One stand right here. <laughs> face to face down one side. Okay. This, this is one man, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to divide it. This is the flesh. Okay? No, no, because let's do it away first. This is the flesh and this is sin. Sin is in this flesh. Right? So sin is in this flesh. So they would be, step in front of him. So they, they would be one. They would be one. Sin is in the flesh. Okay? I'm going to divide it again. Okay. So he said, I'm going to save you from this flesh. I'm going to save you apart from this flesh. <laughs> Your born again experience is apart from this. Because what I did on the cross has severed, circumcised you from this flesh and have given you a new life. So you're not still holding on to this to be identified. Apart from this flesh, you are right with God. You are holy with God. You are in right standing with God. You are a child of God. Are you, are you see where I'm going? 
So he saved us apart from our flesh. Are you with me? Okay, th thanks guys. Amen, amen, amen. Because I want to go somewhere. Grab your Bible. And let's go to... Uh, Go to Galatians chapter 3. And while you're turning there, oh, time to go out so fast, i got to hurry up. It's, it's, when we think about apart from the flesh, but before I was apart from my flesh, I was, I was a slave to sin. No one likes to be a slave. But a slave to sin to where that, when I try to do good, Evil is always present. And the desires that are in us leads us to places we don't want to be. And uh, But something I, I, I come to understand now that I'm, I'm saved and, and, and understanding flesh, so on and so forth. Listen to this. Listen to this. The flesh is going to go wherever you take it, right? Amen? So, so, we can't say, if we would say, how did I end up here? If the flesh could talk, the flesh would say, well, you brought me here. And you, you would say, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm drunk again. You know, why am I drunk again? The flesh would say, well, because you drunk six beers. Or why am I feeling this way? If the flesh would talk, the flesh would tell you why you feel the way you feel. The flesh, they don't, the flesh is only following feelings and thoughts. The flesh is following what you think and what you feel. Because when you put those two together, the body's going to do what? It's going to follow suit. So the body will do whatever you want it to do. Is that right? Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. The body will do whatever you want it to do. But what he wants us to understand is that you've been saved apart from that. You're no longer a slave to sin. But now you've, you, you're getting ready to take control of your body. Through the spirit of God. You're not going to allow it to go do what it wants to do. And how it wants to be done. Because now you have something to fight with. I mean if you can control your body. Wouldn't you control it? Because whatever you feed it, guess what? That's what it's going to desire. The more you give it ice cream, guess what? The more it's going to crave ice cream. The more you drink sodas, the more it's going to crave soda. So the body said, don't get mad at me. I'm just craving what you're giving me. Don't blame me. I'm craving what you're giving me. So if I want to give my body uh, 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 the word of God, guess what? It's going to crave it. <clears throat> Whatever I discipline to do, guess what? That's what it's going to crave. So the body was stand in court and say, Your Honor, <laughs> I just went with him. Are you see what I'm saying? If we, if, if we can divide those two and think, because that's the way we design. And it's awesome. Don't you know the Food and Drug Administration knows that? They, they practice on, on mice, rats, before they practice on us. They give us certain foods, sugar, all kinds of things, and see how this creature responds. Oh, he keeps going back to that. That rat keeps going back to that. Well, let's just put a little bit of it in some soda. Let's put a little bit of it in this. And guess what we do? We keep going back. We keep going back. Because it's addiction. We're addicted to it. They've been doing that for years. Because we understand how the body works. It's amazing. That's where God made it. And they, make, and they are making billions and billions of dollars off of our bodies. Because we're not smart enough to say, you know what, I'm done with it. This is my body. And I'm going to stop feeding it this 